Hello people of YouTube, it's Deepak here and welcome to DCS World 2.7.17 and DECA Ironwork Simulations JF17 Thunder Module. Welcome to Tutorial 17, Type 200A Runway Penetrating Bomb. Today I'm going to demonstrate the Type 200A which is very similar to the Matra Durandal if you're familiar with that weapon. It's a, a bomb which is designed to be high drag, anti-runway. Uh, after release, it deploys a parachute and falls on that parachute straight down. Uh, and on reaching a certain distance above the runway, or it could actually be used against other hardened targets like uh, bunkers and so on, it fires a rocket motor, which uh, it, first it drops the parachute, of course. <laughs> it fires a rocket motor and propels itself under the surface of the runway, or into the hardened target, and then explodes under the surface. So very, very capable at cratering runways, which is its primary use, uh, but also good for hardened targets like bunkers and other hardened structures. Uh, what you're seeing here is the maximum possible loadout on the JF-17. It's possible to carry them singly on the inner pylons, and in pairs in the middle pylons. Oh, there goes a tornado. What's that doing there? Hmm. Anyway, um, yes, so this is the maximum loadout. It is possible to carry six Type 200A bombs. Uh, now, these are in the 450 pound class, or 200 kilograms in uh, Pakistani and uh, Chinese parlance. And, um, oh, there's another tornado. What's that doing there? Anyway, um, yes. Uh, they, they are capable of being released in CCRP, otherwise known as automatic, or CCIP modes, uh, and they will function as long as you are above 1,000 feet at the time of release. So, uh, without any further ado, I will go and get the aircraft uh, started up, and I'll demonstrate how to set up this weapon. We'll then go out and find ourselves a target. Okay, you join me back in the cockpit of the JF-17. We're currently en route towards our target runway. Uh, so I'm now going to demonstrate how to set up the Type 200A for launch. Uh, first, we're going to pull the T1 switch aft. That's our master mode switch, and we're now in air to ground. Uh, next, I'm going to put master arm to armed, and you'll see that the weapons are now flashing standby, and now they say armed. They're ready to go. Uh, first thing I'm going to do is select my target. You could do this uh, by designating a, a waypoint, uh, or you could use the targeting pod. Today I'm actually going to use the air-to-ground radar. So make sure that your air-to-ground radar is on, make sure it's in map mode, and you have the asterisk showing you that uh, it's currently sensor of interest. Um, I'm now going to move my TDC over the target area. I know that my target is here. And you can use the S2 sensor select uh, sorry, sensor control switch uh, to zoom in. So if I press S2 left, I'm going to get expand. You could also actually push this push button up here where it says expand. Uh, if I push it left again, I'm going to get DBS1. Push it again, I'm going to get DBS2. And this is going to give me the highest resolution view of the target area. Uh, now, I'm actually kind of nose on right now, which means that it's not giving me massively good resolution. So let's fix that. Let's come out of active pause and I'm going to deviate to the left a bit. Oh, I've got the autopilot on. Let's take that off. So let's deviate and we should, as it comes off the nose, start to get a better resolution of image. I'm going to roll out about here. There we go. That's actually a lot better. So autopilot back on and let's go and take a little look at this. There we go. I can see the taxiway running down the left hand side and I can see the runway here on the right. Uh, I'm going to select the start of the runway, and I'm going to depress my T5 switch, which is the TDC. So a T5 will allow me to slew, and then depressing it actually allows me to set that target. Uh, I've actually forgotten to put it back into active pause. Let's put it back into active pause. So we now have a target, and you'll see on the HUD, uh, we've got the, the line showing us where it is, the diamond with the arrow showing us that it's out of the field of view of the HUD, and the flashing azimuth steering line. Uh, we also have information about uh, the range to that target, so it's 22.6 nautical miles away. We can see we've got the 200 selected, weapon is ready, air-to-ground radar uh, is, is in use, uh, or it's the sensor of interest, uh, with the sensor point of interest coming from that. 
and our release mode is automatic. Let's go to the store's management page. Uh, and yeah, mode auto. You can actually release this weapon in auto or CCIP. We're going to leave it in auto today. Uh, fusing, we need nose and tail. Uh, this will ensure that not only will it detonate using the nose fuse, uh, but the tail fuse is used for engaging the parachute and then the rocket motor. Quantity, I'm actually going to drop all six of these. And interval, I'm going to go for 800 feet between each drop. Uh, break altitude, I'll set to 1000, although we shouldn't be diving towards the target today. That controls when the break X will appear. Uh, so you can see, weapons are all boxed, they're armed, and we have all of our parameters set up nicely. Now, uh, something to note, uh, you can't deploy this weapon uh, below 1000 feet. I've actually found that a good altitude is around about 2000 feet. The other thing that I've found is that you need to be really accurate with your azimuth steering line and you also want to be going quite fast. In my tests I've had best results uh, flying at about 500 knots. So this is actually quite a big ask. Uh, you need to be going quite fast, quite low and you need to fly accurately. Uh, I'm going to try to get alignment with the runway uh, but um, no guarantees today because this is actually pretty tough to do. I'm going to come out of autopilot and I'm going to begin my descent down to the altitude that I'm actually going to deploy from, which in this case will be 2,000 feet. And um, yeah, I want uh, I want to be flying around about 500 knots in this instance. So 20 miles to go. Uh, I'll then quickly describe uh, the azimuth steering line and the different cues that you get uh, once we get a bit closer to the target. Because the, uh, the GF-17 has slightly unusual uh, presentation when it comes to this. Right, I'm going to start bringing myself towards the target area now because I almost have alignment. Oh, actually, I do have alignment now. Right, let's pull, get ourselves on target quick as we can. Uh, diamond denotes the location of our target. As of the steering line, we want to align with the flight path marker. And there we are. We're just above 500 knots now. Oh, we're at 300 feet, though. I want to be a bit lower. Uh, alignment's not too bad. I'm going to try and move right of that alignment there just to get us right where I want to be. Because, of course, if at all possible, we want these bombs to, to drop in a line going down the runway, but that's fairly hard to achieve. Uh, we'll do our best, though. In the real world, you would have multiple aircraft making a pass at the same time. Uh, and that's how you would ensure that you got good coverage of the runway. Okay, so I'm going to pause very quickly here, and we're going to take a quick look at the azimuth steering line. I've covered this in some of my other videos, but I think it's worth mentioning again. You'll see the azimuth steering line is solid here, but there is a section of it that's attached to your flight path marker here. It's got a little solid part at the top, and then it's dashed. Uh, once we come within 15 seconds, uh, a quarter of it will be filled, uh, so there'll be more solid at the top, and then dashes. Uh, once we're at three seconds, we'll hear a tone. At that point, we should push and hold uh, our weapon's release, which is S3, and we'll see uh, the dashed line becoming solid. It'll start basically ticking down. We need to continue to hold the uh, weapon's release button until we hear, well, actually, we'll then hear another tone, and that's at the release point. We need to still be holding weapons release at the second tone, and then we need to continue to hold weapons release until all bombs are off. If we release the key at any time, uh, the release will be interrupted. So anyway, coming out of pause, and let's try and fly this as accurately as possible. We want this really nicely aligned. I want to be about 2,000 feet. I want to be over two, uh, 500 knots on this occasion. Uh, your mileage may vary. You can try different styles of release. This is what I've been doing, and it's uh, it's been working quite well for me. But yeah, it, this is a tough one to get right, and almost certainly my runway alignment is going to be a little bit wrong. Yeah, actually, it's not a little bit wrong. It's massively wrong. Let's see if we can at least make it a little bit better before we get to the point of release here. Let's uh, just judge this visually, because uh, we're now close enough that the radar has switched into automatic uh, ranging mode, so it's no longer giving us an image. We're going to have to just try and do this by eye. Oh, okay, we're getting a bit close to be mucking around too much with this alignment, but uh, let's try. Oh, I need to get the speed up again. Okay, so I kind of have alignment now. Let's see. We don't want to be descending, Okay, I'm pushing and holding weapon release now. That's three seconds. 
Let's begin of release. I can see weapons coming off. And they're all away. Okay, let's pause. I'm going to go to the F6 view, and let's see if we can get a good view of what happens next. Coming down on the parachute. Boom, 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 boom. Okay, alignment was not amazing. However, we definitely got some hits there. We've definitely put some holes in that runway. And of course, with multiple passes, uh, we would we would have that runway out of action. Although I would say that's actually not too bad. Right, uh, just so the aircraft stops complaining, I'm going to make sure that we're in the air-to-air -air profile now, because we've uh, dropped all of those air-to-ground weapons. So the fly-by-wire needs to be in its new mode. So there you go, that happened very quickly. Uh, that's the Type 200A in automatic release. Uh, you'll find that the, the CCIP will work in basically exactly the same way, but you do need to be low and you do need to be fast. Uh, otherwise, your pipper will be well below the bottom of the HUD and you're going to find it almost impossible to actually make hits. I would recommend doing automatic delivery uh, and I would recommend either using the radar uh, or using your targeting pod or even using a pre-planned... Um, steer point uh, accurately placed on the runway because that's where you're going to get the best results so i, I hope you all enjoyed that uh, i'm going to give a quick shout out to the ground crew thank you very much for supporting the channel channel right frantic stone storm kimbari byron farrow leo netzel harish rajan and pink floyd if you would like to join deep hacks ground crew you can press the join button below uh, and if you don't want to do that, then please uh, consider subscribing. It costs nothing, uh, and it's a really big help to me and to the channel. Uh, also, like and comment. I hope that you all enjoyed that, and I'll see you all next time.